Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking this bench to Farmhouse Chic, so stick around. All right, we have arrived at the Goodwill, so let's go on in and see what we can find. Look at this beautiful bench, you guys. Take a look at the detail on that leg. Looks a lot like the piece we have already redone for our entryway. And check it out. Just $10. I totally think we can work that around. Get it with that chrome paint to match what's already in the entry hallway. We picked up this beautiful little bench at the Goodwill for just that $10 purchase price. And it is an amazing bench, you guys. It has great bones and great structure, but it is a little bit outdated and definitely does not fit in with the decor that we were looking for. So we're going to transform it into something just a little more palatable. The first thing to do on a project like this one is remove the cushion from the base. That's really easy to do. Most of these types of benches are going to be screwed in from the bottom. So just simply flip it over and start removing all of that hardware. Now it was time to get the measurement for the fabric that I would be using. I wanted to give myself two extra inches on every side because we have to pull that fabric over to staple it down. Measure it lengthwise and widthwise before you continue. The batting on this piece was still in really great shape, so I wanted to preserve that and use it again. I carefully removed all of the staples going all the way around, making sure that I did not puncture or tear that batting. I could tell by looking at this piece that the MDF board was still in great shape, so we decided to remove all of the staples carefully so that we could just use the same board. You're going to notice when we get all the material off that the cushion is still in excellent condition as well, so no need to change that for this project. For this farmhouse makeover, we will be using chalk paint, so there's no need for any sanding. However, you do still need to clean that piece really well, so give it a great dusting. Wipe it down with some warm water if you need to. If there's any rust pieces, then you are going to need to brush that off with a good wire brush. You're going to notice now that I am elevating this bench because we don't want to get any of the paint on the plastic that's underneath those feet. This is just going to help us a little bit by lifting it up. For this project, I am using a chalk paint by Rust-Oleum in linen white, and I'm going to be applying that with a foam brush. The foam brush worked great for this type of project because you have all of that decorative work on that frame. I needed to be able to get into all those little nooks and crannies, and the way that a foam brush moves, it just allowed me to squeeze in there a whole lot better. But feel free to use whatever type of brush you would like. You'll notice that I'm just taking the paint right off of that paint lid. A little really does go a long way when working with chalk paint. If you've never worked with chalk paint before, then it might scare you a little because it's going to be very see-through and streaky, but don't worry, that will be taken care of in the second coat. Just let that dry really well, and then it's time to go in and do the same thing with coat number two. When working with chalk paint, it is very important to seal it in with wax. I'm using this one from Bear along with a wax brush. If you don't have a waxing brush, that is okay. You can apply your wax with a lint-free cloth. Simply dab your brush or cloth into your can and pick up a little bit of that wax. It really does go a long way, so no need to get huge amounts. Work in small areas at a time, making sure you get every little nook and cranny and make sure all that paint is covered. When you get your first section done, grab a lint-free cloth and go ahead and begin wiping your wax smooth. This is just going to remove any excess wax or any clumps in the wax before the wax starts to harden and set. Continue working all the way around your project, working section at a time, putting on the wax, wiping off the wax. Now it's time to give this bench that little rustic vibe. To do that, we're taking a medium grade sandpaper and we're just going to start hitting some of the high points around the entire frame. 
We want this to look like natural wear, like it's an old antique bench that's been around a while with a big story to tell and lots of love to share. You'll notice here, we just basically concentrated on the corners, giving a little wear to the frame, anywhere that it would naturally take some nicks and bruises throughout the years. Once you have that frame looking exactly the way you want it, it is time to give it a really good dusting. Make sure all of the debris is off of your project because now we're going in with that second coat of wax. We do not want any of that dust or debris to be sealed inside of our wax as it's curing over the next couple of weeks. Now that the frame of our project is all done, it's time to start working on the cushion. Simply measure your fabric to size, length, and width, and make sure that you cut it as straight as possible. Having lines on your pattern will definitely help. Give it a good ironing. We want everything to look nice and tailored. Lay it face down and then center your cushion right on top. Pull that fabric up on one side of your cushion. Make sure that you start pulling it nice and taut. We want our fabric to be tight, but not too tight that it's gonna rip against those staples. You'll see that I am working on opposite sides. This just helps everything stay nice and tight as we are working throughout the project. Don't forget to mark your little holes where the screws have to go back in. Otherwise, it could make it a lot more challenging <laughs> to put the whole thing back together. Now we're going to simply work on the other two opposing sides, doing the exact same thing. Pulling it nice and tight, making sure those lines are even and straight, and making sure we have all the wrinkles out. And don't forget to mark the holes for those screws. Working on the corners is very important. You're going to want to pull it up nice and tight, making as few pleats as possible. We want this again to look like a nicely tailored project and not something that we just did quickly at home. <laughs> so just work your way around the corner, pulling and maneuvering that fabric however you have to do it to have the fewest pleats possible. It should look nice and tailored when you're finished and then you can go and just snip off the extra fabric. Now if you had a few of those stubborn staples that wouldn't go all the way through, just simply hammer them on down and go ahead and re-affix that batting. Make sure you line up the little screw holes and then just staple away. Now that you're all done with your cushion, this is what it should look like underneath and on top. And now it's time to put it all back together. Simply align the frame with the little holes that you had made in the fabric and replace all the hardware. And there you have it. Your little farmhouse chic sitting bench is now complete. Take a look at how beautiful this is, you guys. And it's going to be beautiful for years to come. It does have that little bit of an antique feel. It looks like it has a story to tell. It looks like it's had much love throughout the years. And really, it's just a few hours old. I hope that you will be brave enough to give something like this a try. Check out your Goodwill. You will come upon some great finds. You will make you a beautiful new piece for pennies on the dollar. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.